Hello and welcome to ABE 474, Indoor Environmental Control. Um, in this section of lecture, we are going to be looking at air conditioning systems, and this is focused from the textbook uh, chapter 2, which is titled Air Conditioning Systems. And the focus of this chapter is really on thinking about and planning out um, a system and all the components that would go together in order to um, uh, control the environment. So thermal environment, um, potentially air quality, um, but thinking about all the pieces and how they work together um, and, and planning a complete system. So what we're going to talk about um, today, um, we're going to review some of the major system components, uh, what their functions are, and then we're going to look at an example uh, from the book about um, components put together into a complete system and kind of just talk through how the pieces go together. Um, the, this chapter in the book is certainly focused on human applications, so the um, applicability of what we're going to talk about to non-human systems may be limited, uh, but the thought process and the approach to putting together a system uh, would be very similar. The components might be different. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. First, let's talk about what are some of the major system components that we might see inside of an air conditioning system. So we need a way to move air. Um, so, um, so we're going to need fans uh, or some other form of air handler. We're going to need to move fluids. Um, our system is going to need some heat exchangers in order to uh, potentially need some heat exchangers in order to do um, heating and cooling. Uh, so we're going to need a way to control the flow and to provide the flow and control the flow uh, of that liquid. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and write water, but it doesn't have to be water that's used in the system. That's just a very common uh, fluid. So we need pumps and control valves um, for heated or chilled water. We also are going to need um, a way to provide heat, so whether that's to heat the water or to directly heat the air, and also to cool. So we might have uh, some form of a chiller, um, a furnace, and or a boiler. Um, we need some way to um, know how much air we're supplying and ensure that we're supplying it to the right place. So we may want to incorporate some kind of flow measurement um, and we definitely want to include some sort of um, provisions for controlling the flow. So flow measurement and control so that we know we're sending the air to the right place, the place where we intend it to be. Um, and then we need some form of heat exchanger to actually heat and cool the air that we're supplying to our space <coughs> so that we can transfer energy between two fluid streams. going to take a look um, in just a few minutes um, within your text in chapter 2 we're going to look at figure 2-1 which is titled the complete system so let's go ahead and take a look at that right now Okay, so I want to draw your attention first. Um, we'll start with the supply space. So the, the space that we want to provide a set point temperature to, for example, um, is what they're calling our zone. So it might be a room, it might be a series of rooms, it might be a section of a large facility, um, but we're looking at controlling 
the um, air properties within a zone, so a specific place. So we are going to be supplying some air to that zone and we'll be bringing back air from that zone. Uh, so we'll start here and talk about, uh, first let's talk about the routing of the air. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we, we may bring some air uh, from outdoors in, into the space and we may um, bring back some air from the space and mix those two streams together, uh, condition them, uh, so, so change their state, and supply them back to the space. We might also take some of the return air and exhaust it to the outside, so we may not want to keep all of it. Um, so you would have a series of dampers, that's what your, is indicated here by these um, uh, zigzag lines. Those are dampers to control the flow of the air, and the same thing, there's a set of dampers here. Um, and then when we start to look at the components here that are actually conditioning the air, um, you might have a filter that would, that would stand in the place for some of the air cleaning that we talked about before. This is a heating coil, this is a cooling coil, so to warm up the air, to cool down the air. Um, and then this is a humidifier if you want to add moisture to the air. Um, when we get into psychrometric processes, we'll look at each one of these and what their function is in terms of the process. So whether it is um, changing the temperature, changing the moisture, um, or both, some combination of both. So how do we uh, supply a warm fluid to our heating coil so we can trace back and take a look? And they've given us two options for how we might do that. So there's a hot water boiler or a steam boiler. Um, you can trace the, the components and the lines, but the idea here is that you have a central unit that is um, providing very hot water through a piping system, um, being pumped through, through a piping system, going to uh, the heating coil in each of your um, air handlers and potentially could supply multiple air handlers. Similarly, for the cooling coil, we can trace that back and we find that we have a chilled water supply. So they're, they're giving the options for an air-cooled chiller or a cooling tower, um, and you can trace the, the components through here as well. Um, this should give you a little bit of an idea of how a system might be put together. There are a lot of different options uh, and things that you can change along the way. Um, what we're going to focus on in the next chapter are psychrometrics and psychrometric properties. So we're going to be looking at how to manipulate the air uh, and change it from one state to another. So when we come in and look at the air that's going uh, across our components, we're at one state here, and each one of these components is going to change the state of the air. And when we get to here, we want it to be at the state uh, that's going to allow us to achieve the condition that we want in our zone. Um, so that's probably enough for, for a first intro. If you read through the rest of the chapter, it's going to break it down and talk about some of these components individually, um, and it's going to break down and give you some other um, scenarios for which you, you might uh, control the space. It's going to talk a little bit about the zones that um, I mentioned to you that we might be controlling a single room or a series of rooms and thinking about how do you lay that out and decide um, how much you want to control on one section or one zone with one set of air handlers. Um, so sort of to summarize chapter two and really the message that I want you to take away from this chapter, um, when we're, as we're looking at the components of this system, they are um, uh, intended to do a specific thing. Uh, and let's summarize what's that specific thing and think about why it's important. So environmental control is all about two things. The state of energy first and the second the movement of energy so each of those components has a purpose that helps us to um, go from one state of energy move that energy to a desired state so we have to know where we are and we have to know the process 
that will change in the way we want it to to get to the state where we want to be. And as we're thinking about this uh, state of energy and movement of energy, we need to bear in mind that um, we can look at a variety of forms of energy as we're thinking about our processes and our methods in order to control um, the environment. So energy might be in, uh, in the air that we're working with. It could be in uh, water or other fluids that we're working with. Um, and it can also be in solids, so within the structures of the facility that we're working in. Um, and really, you know, what we're going to talk about and spend a considerable amount of time on for this entire semester is how do we manipulate those flows of energy in order to uh, result in the desired state, um, in order for us to have the environment that we want to have. Um, so that's kind of what I want you to take away from Chapter 2, and with our next installment, we'll start with psychrometrics. So. Come back soon.